In this lesson today, we're going to be taking a look at composition of isometries. Now, through our investigation of transformations, what we've looked at so far have all been what we call isometries. Now, iso means same, and metries are measurements or distances. So any transformation that preserves distance or preserves measurement is an isometry. So in our investigation so far, that would include our translations, reflections, and rotations. So really the question comes down to, in this case, what is meant by a composition? Well, in math, a mathematical composition could be defined as a sequence of operations conducted on a single figure or expression done in sequence. So a lot of times, a good example for this is the order of operations. We take a single number and we do a series of mathematical operations to it. We might raise it to an exponent, um, multiply it, add or subtract our grouping symbols. But the fact that we're following a specific order of items gives us a composition of isometries. In some cases, compositions can be commutative, sometimes they are not. It really depends on the situation. And when we take a look at compositions of isometries in geometry, the same holds true. Sometimes they can carry, sometimes they don't. Now, in order to govern these concepts of mathematical composition, we do have three overall theorems that we're going to be taking a look at. First, theorem 9.1, composition of isometries simply states that the composition of two or more isometries is an isometry. So if I do a reflection, that's an isometry. If I do a rotation, that's an isometry. So if I take an object to reflect it and then rotate it, that resulting figure will also be an isometry. Okay. So second, reflections across parallel lines a composition of reflections across two parallel lines is a translation. Now, the theorem does state that it's across two parallel lines, but in reality, if it's across any number, any even number of parallel lines, we end up with a translation. Now, herein, we start getting notation coming into play. So if I were to take a triangle, say triangle ABC, and I wanted to reflect across line M, and reflect across line L, this open circle in between them is composition of functions. So triangle A, B, C. So as long as lines L and M are parallel, what I would be doing here is I would take my triangle A, B, C. <laughs> I take what's out here on the end, on the right-hand side, and I start working to my left in my notation. So this triangle gets picked up and dropped into this activity. So I reflect it across line L. Once I have that resulting image, I then take that figure and I drop it backwards into here. Now I could continue to compose as far back as is necessary, but this gives me that starting idea. So if I were to take an actual triangle and put triangle here with my lines L and M. So first thing I would do is I would take my triangle A, B, C. I've reflected across line L, so A, B, C. Here's A prime, B prime, C prime. Now, if I'm reflecting and I continue this along, I would end up with A equivalent of double prime, B double prime, C double prime. And I could have just done the exact same movement by simply taking my triangle and translating it to the right. Okay. And the full distance of translation from A to A prime, uh, A double prime, B to B double prime, or C to C double prime is twice the distance from L to M. C had to move from here to line L 
and then out to C prime. So those distances are the same. And then fr so from L to C prime got doubled. And then from C prime to the line M, and from line M to C double prime, that distance got doubled. So from C to C double prime is twice that distance from L to M. Okay. So reflections across parallel lines, as long as it's an even number of parallel lines, is going to be a translation, and that distance will be twice the distance from L to M. Okay. That leaves us one more theorem to work with, that is reflections across intersecting lines. And it tells us that a composition of reflections across two intersecting lines is a rotation. So same general idea. If I were to take my material, put in my two intersecting lines, let's work right here, and then put in my shape, say again a triangle, and I were to first reflect across line L, my triangle would end up somewhere around here and then reflect across line M, my triangle would end up somewhere around here. What I'm really looking at is the idea that my triangle rotated the distance up to that other location. And the amount of rotation is twice the angle between L and M. Okay, so we're seeing a lot of doubling of figures here. Now this is all good in theory, but what does it look like when we put it into actual practice? Let's take a look at a few examples. So what is reflection across M composed with reflection across L of object J? And describe the resulting transformation. So first up, I have line L and I have line M as we see they are given as being parallel. And we're going to take J and reflect it first across L and then across M. Okay. So do pay careful attention to the order that these things happen in. So first we're going to reflect J across line L. So remember a reflection, the distance from any point to line of reflection, and we then move as a perpendicular so we're going to end up with our J being somewhere around here, will result in a figure that looks roughly like this, very roughly like this. So once we have our reflection across L, according to our ordering for compositions, I then take that figure or that image, it becomes the pre-image for my next one, which is reflection across M. So I'm going to take this figure and reflect it across M over into this space as such, which then of course could be viewed as having taken my original J and simply translating it this distance to end up down here. And how far was that translation? Well, it's gonna be twice the distance between these two points, uh, these two lines. So on the, system that I'm working with, the appearance of those is an inch and a half. So I would be taking from J to this final image of J and the movement would be three inches because it is twice that distance of translation. Okay. Next, I'm going to take this other J and I'm going to reflect it across line L and then across line M with C being the point of intersection for these two lines. Okay, so first take L, uh, J and reflect it across L as such to where I end up here. Now I'm going to take that J and reflect it across line M as such, resulting in this figure, which we could see is simply taking J and rotating it around point C, the point of intersection, a certain number of degrees. Now, how much rotation is that? Well, we're not quite half, but since the angle between L and M 
is 70 degrees, you would be looking at a rotation of 140 degrees to get from our original pre-image through this intermediate out to our final image. So it's a rotation of 120 degrees or 140 degrees around C, which of course we'd write as rotation of 140 degrees about point C, okay? Our previous one had been a translation of three inches to uh, right and down, which we don't have specific notation for that. Typically when we're dealing with uh, translations, we're given specific units on each cardinal direction, okay? So as far as these isometries are concerned, we can create translation as a series of reflections. We can create rotation as a series of reflections. Well, the other, only other one that we have is reflection itself. And a reflection is always going to be itself. So what else can we do with compositions of isometries? There is one other type that does come up on occasion, and that is called a glide reflection. So a glide reflection is the composition of a translation and a reflection across a line parallel to the direction of translation. So if I translate to the right, then I need to have a line of reflection that runs right to left so I can move across it. If I translate up or down, then I need to have a vertical line of reflection that I translate across. Now, we do see this quite often in our daily lives, such as when we see a series of footprints. Because what the footprints do is the foot moves forward and then reflects across a central line in order for our other foot to go down. Our central line is our line of balance. Then we move forward and the other foot comes down, reflects across that line of balance, forward and reflect across, forward and reflect across. So how can we do this if we are taking a look at individual items? Well, first, let's take a look at the notation. If we want to do a glide reflection, that would simply be the fact that we are doing a translation. Let's make this one go purely to the right. So let's say three comma zero. And then after that, we are doing a reflection across, let's say a line M. And I wanna do these in sequence. So I compose them. And what am I going to do it to? Let's do uh, A, B, C, D, so some quadrilateral that we will create. Well, what is needed for this? I need to have a line M that runs right and left, okay? And some sort of scaling system. And then we need to have our quadrilateral. So let me put one in here. and call it A, B, C, and D. So in order for this to work, what I need to do is move all points, three units to the right, and then reflect across line M. So if I do that with point A, I'm going to move it three units to the right, and then reflect across line M to get its next piece which would put it about here. Then if I do that for point B, and we'll move three units to the right, one, two, three, and reflect across, so I'll end up somewhere down about here. And then if I run it for point C, again, one, two, three units to the right, and then reflect across, ending up down around here. And then finally, for point D, take it and move it one, two, three units across and reflect to about this location. Then I'm going to end up with A prime, B prime, 
c prime and d prime. So I simply took my figure and moved it and reflected it. So I have, of course, a glide reflection. And another one would glide three units to the right and reflect, three units to the right and reflect. Now, if I do two glide reflections, you would notice that A becomes A prime, which three to the right and reflect again would be an A double prime, which is simply a basic translation straight ahead. And if you think about yourself walking, your left foot would move to left foot, which would move to left foot, left foot, and that's a simple translation as well. Okay, so compositions of isometries, really we can do any combinations of figures that we want. It's just what end result do we look for. Uh, another transformation that we do have available is dilation. What happens when you uh, reflect something and enlarge it or reflect and reduce it? What happens if you uh, rotate something about a point and have it uh, enlarge as you go? So we are looking specifically at compositions of isometries here, but we can do compositions of any transformations that we wish.